Hey everyone, welcome to our Thrix Capital Sessions uh, market research. And today we are with Brian from Sentiment. And today we will be exploring the Sentiment platform uh, once more. And uh, I think we will be diving deeper also in uh, social uh, trends and uh, social features which Sentiments can provide. And uh, overall, uh, I've done my uh, exploration. How does it work? Maybe Brian will uh, correct me a little. But uh, Sentiment as a platform uh, provides a great uh, provides a great uh, way to analyze current market trends uh, through so-called so technically how it works. Uh, Sentiment monitors uh, a number of. Twitter profiles, uh, top Telegram chats, encrypt, so Reddit uh, discussions, uh, etc., and combines them in data points, basically, where uh, some mentions of uh, any crypto-related, basically, assets, uh, news uh, are combined, and number of uh, mentions of such news are basically calculated, and that's how we see these uh, trends. So uh, let me know, Brian, if I'm correct, because I... Uh, jumped into your docs, uh, wanted to understand how it works. And uh, yeah, if this is correct, uh, uh, it's great that it is. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, good, good summary for sure. It's uh, we do a little bit of a bit of everything at Santiment. We cover the on chain aspects as well as the social elements to see how the crowd is kind of reacting to the ebbs and flows of markets at any given time. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, I think, Brian, uh, we can jump to some social metrics, which uh, you said you have prepared some, and it would be great uh, maybe to discuss them. Also, please let us know if any questions during the meeting, uh, leave them in the chats, and uh, we will return to them a bit later. So let me share your screen, Brian. I just did myself, but uh, if I should unhide so you can, whatever is best for you. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, it's already, so yeah, it's... The screens should be seen already. Okay, perfect. So one thing that we like to start out with when we come to Santiment would be our main social trends page right here. And this is not the only place where you can find social elements, but it's kind of the home base where you get an idea of what the, what the crowd is talking about at any given time. And you'll see four tabs here, and I'll go over each one here, beginning with the first, which is trending words. And uh, these aren't just arbitrary words that we pick out of a hat. These are all based on what the math is telling us are the most rising and prominent topics in crypto at any given time. And there's a lot of various random words and noise that might be related to a, a Binance promotion or another big exchange, uh, you know, initiative that's gaining traction at any, any given time. But you can really see after this first one, which is something to do with the Velo ecosystem, which I won't get too into, but below that is CPI, right? Which is a very important discussion. And <clears throat> right now it's uh, the number two trending topic in crypto. And according to our summary, which by the way is AI generated. So this is taking all of the different discussions related to CPI and giving it a an appropriate summary as to uh, what it's referring to. So they say the word CPI is trending due to uh, the consumer price index, a key economic indicator that measures the average change over time in prices paid by urban consumers. Uh, the text mentioned upcoming CPI data releases, actual CPI values and expectations around the CPI data, indicating a focus on economic trends and potential market impact. So in short, the CPI report is on people's minds. Traders have seen many times, especially in previous months, where the CPI has had a dramatic impact on prices one way or another. In fact, last month, the CPI gave uh, crypto a nice boost temporarily. And uh, according to how markets are going as of right now, which we can briefly touch on, uh, it does look like the optimism is there right now for the CPI report. Below that, we have various things, tip, dogs. Um, dogs, by the way, is related to trading on the ton blockchain. Uh, different prices are being offered for dogs on ton. Long story short, it looks like the main discussions are around inflation and the CPI report. 
and that seems to be what the next big narrative is that is going to shift markets one way or the other. You've got Bitcoin here at number eight, but I always recommend this as kind of the home base when you've been away for, from crypto for a day or a couple of days or especially weeks, come to the trending words page and you're quickly going to find what those topics are that are driving markets one way or the other, as well as some of the associated words, right? Which are really important to get a grasp as to why that word is trending and what they're kind of related to, even if these other words aren't necessarily in the top 10 themselves. Yeah, really nice uh, summary uh, by Brian. But uh, I just look through trending words uh, mm -hmm. right now. Some remember some news and uh, from this week, and I just see that, for instance, like the ninth word right now is uh, CFTS. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember uh, recently they have announced that Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, they classified them as a commodity. So basically, it's a uh, big news uh, for crypto markets as well. And uh, it so through training process also clear basically why it is uh, here but uh it's a, it's a big news for for the markets and yeah uh, here we can see it uh how it's basically connected here plus uh, like there is was um uh the conference and right now uh, ethereum uh, cc which is uh in paris uh in in, in europe overall in I believe it's not in Paris, but it's it, it should be in uh, Belgium, uh, in Brussels. A big mm -hmm. uh, a conference regarding Ethereum also is right now. Uh, so it's a great tool uh, to not only see the trends, but some maybe big events which you might have missed uh, and uh, see uh, how they how they basically project their uh, results on the market uh, in Paris. Right. Yeah, thanks for mentioning the CFTC. It's certainly, I think as of right now and why the markets are moving the way they are, they're reacting positively due to this news yeah. because yeah. the crypto, as long as we've remembered, has had that battle uh, between being classified as a commodity rather than a security, especially here in the US. That's where, uh, you know, Ethereum recently, uh, I know XRP has had its, um, you know, discussions with the SEC and various uh, bureaucracies out there. So, yeah, we're seeing the CFTC making these statements and it's, it's having a dramatic impact. Um, maybe not a huge bull run uh, all of a sudden, but certainly a positive uh, reaction to the market. Yeah, what, what I can say here, I think uh, talking about the bull run, uh, I, I think I, I just had a saying, you know, when the changes, they are uh, cumulative, uh, but uh, they come cumulative, but then they realize themselves in really risky moves. So basically, mm -hmm. that's, I think, what will happen. And uh, that's is usually what happens. We see a lot of some positive news prior to bull run, but then the bull run happens. And then that's what we have. Yeah. Absolutely. And moving on to the second tab here, we have the historical crypto trends tab. And here we have nine different subjects that are kind of recurring topics on uh, cryptocurrency discussion forums at any given time. We have in no particular order, ETF, CPI, inflation, meme coins, liquid staking, restaking, AI, bull market, social fi, and real world assets. And you'll notice right away, there are a lot of declines among these topics. ETFs being talked about less and less as the hype has died down a little bit. Meme coins, especially because they have been struggling compared to other sectors of the markets. And of course, markets in general have struggled in the past four months now, ever since the mid-March all-time high. Uh, we have bull market picking up a little bit of steam because people are anticipating a rebound and starting to see semblances of one. Social fi is starting to grow and real world assets are declining. So they're all over the place. You can see AI actually is having a nice spike and inflation as of today is having a nice spike with CPI. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but this is more of a uh, long term perspective on the markets, looking at nine different subjects, which we update from time to time, depending on the, the longer term topics that are constantly being discussed. And they'll give you a good glimpse at which ones are uh, heating up or cooling down at any given time. 
Uh, yeah, uh, that's by the way uh, what I also see. So, like on this, all of these graphs, there is also a graph of uh, Bitcoin, but on RVI assets we see the maker graph. I'm just uh, that's basically and partly clear why. But uh, I'm also curious to understand, for instance, uh, oh, how does the choice basically for uh, these graphs uh, of uh, basically cryptocurrencies works because I, I'm just curious to understand with liquid staking, for instance, and restaking, I think maybe it works more with Ethereum and that's uh, just will be my first pick, uh, I, I believe, but that's what I, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I, I do think that Ethereum probably would make more sense and it's something we could update. We, we kind of, as we put up these different charts, when we get feedback or one of our staff members realizes there might be a better asset to be associated with that topic will make that change kind of like we did with real world assets and maker uh but for others you know it's kind of bitcoin by default because that's yeah. generally what's going to be most appropriate for almost all topics in crypto because bitcoin does drive markets regardless of your take on it whether you're a maxi or not um but yeah there's there's not like a perfect science to which asset you choose to be associated with a certain topic but you can certainly open it up open it up as i've done so here and you can see that maker or dsr is that primary discussion uh associated with real world assets which is why that choice was made but you can always go to the drop down and switch to bitcoin or ethereum by default or even add another asset and it'll um, be included in this drop down here so we keep options completely open yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's what I really like about the platform. Uh, it's real versatile uh, and convenient to use in this way. So you can always basically take a look at everything uh, which you like. That's, right. That's... And while we're here, you know, you can also just close out this topic. You'll see this by default, and we can type in anything we'd like. Let's say we want to just go buy or buying or bought. So the overall mentions of kind of positive themes uh, related to people's optimism. And then we can compare that directly to sell or selling or sold. We'll put them on a shared axis. And you'll see over the past three months, times when buying or selling is starting to gain some traction. Obviously right here, is notable here at the beginning of July. This was right when we were bottoming out. Uh, it's still showing Maker, so let me switch to Bitcoin's price. There we go. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin's price got all the way down to about 54K, and you can see how the crowd got incredibly polarized here. And that's generally the sign of a turnaround, whether it's a lot of buying or a lot of selling or a little bit of both as it was here. This was kind of that signal telling us, okay, all of the people with strong opinions are really starting to come out and make uh, their voices heard. And sure enough, it, it immediately turned around the markets. Who, who's to say whether this was the true bottom for the rest of the year or anything like that. But at least for the time being, since a week has passed, this ended up being a very good buy the dip signal. So we look for plenty of other signals in the opposite direction, such as June 7th, when we were back at 71.6K, and we see this big buy signal here uh, where everyone is saying it's time to buy more. And sure enough, that's when we drop down. So the big thing we uh, have constantly preached at Santiment is the, the markets are constantly moving the opposite direction of the crowd's expectations. So when the crowd is saying, all right, we're all going to the moon, that tends to be where the top is. That's what everyone was saying back in March. If I zoom out about six months instead of three months, you'll see it. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, if we went all the way back to November, 2022, when FTX was collapsing and everyone was saying, crypto's going to zero, get out while you can, that's where uh, it's the perfect time to buy the dip. Uh, Warren Buffett in, in equities says this all the time, buy when there's blood in the streets. So, this was that March, you know, euphoria that was going on that ended up being uh, kind of a foreshadow to the all time high that happened less than a week later. And it hasn't come close ever since. So that's one of my favorite charts right here is the buy versus sell 
narratives and how much just the extreme opinions are uh, coming out at any given time. Yes, yeah, to be honest, it's uh, a, a great tool. I, I think I, I missed it, uh, uh, like totally, that you can do this such type of a comparison. And that gives another uh, lay of understanding and perception uh, here. And that's really interesting. I would totally take a look at it with some other uh, combinations because I think buy or sell is just the best place to show it. But I think if you will think of some time about it, you will understand what you can add here. Absolutely. So yeah that's that's true uh so maybe we could uh, also take a look at uh, other social trends which mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, on the platform uh, because there is another uh, page uh, called trending coins uh, which also provides some uh, understanding in uh, so in basically what is crowd is buying basically what is crown is talking about Right. In particular. So the trending coins dashboard here is a, a kind of similar to what the trending words tab is, except we're looking specifically at assets, obviously. And there's a few different elements to this page, uh, primarily the positive versus neutral versus negative sentiment for each of those coins that are seeing the highest percentage increase versus their normal level of discussion. So right now we have ton coin up there. Bitcoin is being talked about a lot, obviously, because it's still in a very polarizing territory. Ethereum, kind of for the same reason, and also related to those ETFs that people are highly anticipating. Tezos, interestingly, is up there and seeing a huge amount of positive sentiment compared to what looks to be almost no negative sentiment at all. Uh, Binance USD, Anchor, uh, Gala, oh, I can't even pronounce that, Galatasaray fan token. Basic Attention Token, Alex Lab, and Nexo round out the top 10. And so you can see the proportions of the positive, new, positive, neutral, and negative sentiment for each. And obviously, as you would imagine, the higher the ratio of positive sentiment, the more likely we're getting close to a top because people are likely talking about it in a bullish sense because, they, because prices are rising in most cases uh, and FOMO is kind of kicking in. Now, if we scroll down, we can actually see these useful meters that show how bearish to bullish the crowd is at any given time. So we can see ton coin in slightly bullish range. Bitcoin is actually right at neutral. So it's kind of being pulled in both directions at the moment. Um, Ethereum, people are quite bullish on it. Tezos, a little more neutral. I won't do the whole thing, but you get the idea. And then you can see the social volume and price widgets here as well as an AI summary explaining why it's trending. So for example, TUN is the number one asset because it's being used in the context of buying and selling a crypto token called DOGS on the TUN platform. Remember we saw DOGS on the uh, trending words tab as well. Multiple users are offering to sell DOGS, to DOGS tokens at different prices on the TUN platform using escrow services. Um, and then we can also see a bearish summary so the people who are kind of non-believers in ton right now, there's an explanation as to why. And then the people who are big believers and are very bullish on ton, you can see their explanation. So you get a full context of why it's trending, why people don't like it and why you should be a little concerned and why people really like it and why you should be excited. And that's the same for all 10 of these assets. And it's AI generated, up to date, really, is is keeping tabs on exactly what those conversations are as they're coming out for each of them and it's constantly being updated with the connected words to each of these assets so i i really spend a lot of time on this page and uh get a lot of information about the markets from looking at it uh yeah so talking regarding this page uh, I can say that uh, this, so for me, was surprising uh, when I looked at it today. That so basically, from all of these uh, tokens here, uh, uh, I see like ton, of course, why it's the first. It, it still was surprising for me that it's first. So it's uh, rather unusual for me. 
but basically i think i i ne never heard of some of these tokens at all so i'm just really curious to understand what are they and why are people talking about them uh, so overall uh, sentiment grants i think the great like, like uh, suite of tools which uh, can help you to see the current narrative uh, like the narrative in the moment uh, what i can say for sure because uh, usually narrative in the moment is re really easily missed uh, and it, sometimes it's really hard to grasp what is happening in the market currently of course we know the biggest news uh, but some uh, i can say some uh, like pivotal stones like uh, underwater uh, traps are hidden uh, for us and we do not know uh, many about even maybe not everyone knows about ton as much what they're building uh, and how they're basically try to uh, build their ecosystem uh, i think they have rather interesting approach with uh, like hamster combat i think everybody heard of them rather <laughs> interesting uh, way how they're developing there and uh, i think hamster is also here on the top was so uh, i think they haven't uh, listed yet but uh, everyone talks talking uh, is talking about them already and that's yeah that's interesting absolutely you'll discover a lot of assets out there that are not typically on your radar and, and get a lot of new discoveries this way whether you're an altcoin trader or not uh sometimes a lot of these smaller assets like alex for example or you know kind of an og like basic attention token sometimes they'll pop up and have an extreme impact on where all of markets are going next um, especially if it's kind of the leader of a specific sector uh, notice basic attention token by the way the crowd is all the way bullish right now so there's quite a bit of euphoria going on i do see that prices have been rising quite a bit and social volume is gaining a little bit of steam too uh, so you'll learn a lot about the overall market conditions and which you know projects people are kind of honing in on at any given time mm, yeah yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's true that's uh, interesting uh, we have i think previously talked a bit uh, regarding uh, overall uh, i think this feature uh, before and also regarding a bit crypto narratives uh, the next page which is in beta, but uh, I think Brian can help us give a deeper understanding uh, on basically what is, uh, how does it work basically, what is uh, behind it. Yeah, so the crypto narratives page here, we're looking at the percentage of discussion overall uh, that each of these specific larger term topics are making up of the overall social discourse among crypto traders um, and we're scraping data off of Reddit, Telegram, X, uh, 4chan, and Bitcoin talk in particular to look at the kind of piece of the pie or the social dominance that, that these are all the, uh, kind of making up. So even FTX right here, we can see, is still getting some discussion. Um, for those who uh, were a former FTX customer, you may have received a notification about um the bankruptcy filing and the, the specific plan and, and the details of it the other day um, so that's still being talked about a little bit even almost two years later airdrops are actually getting a, a large portion of discussion as of late uh game fi has been making up a huge portion of discussion uh, partly because we're we're putting a lot of different uh assets into this box here um, but meme coins, you can see, are being discussed a little bit less over, over the past few months. And it, it's a great way to kind of see the trends uh, visual, visually, um, how one you know, topic is starting to absorb the discussion rates of a declining topic that is no longer drawing interest. Yeah, also here, yeah, a bit lower, I had, I had seen mm -hmm. uh, another rather uh, interesting uh, uh, graph. Uh, this one here? Chart. Uh, yeah, this one here, yeah. So yeah, this, this is shows... kind of another look at some of the similar topics and, and looks in a little more of a zoomed in perspective. So 
This is just the past month where the other one, I think, was either a three or six month timeline. Uh, and this one, you'll see more uh, topics that are, are kind of in the top 20 on any given time. Bitcoin and Bitcoin's price are always going to be here. You can see how much they were really being discussed a month ago. Um, and I believe that's when we kind of were seeing a local top and people were getting excited. And just the overall amount of discussions was up a lot compared to right now. Because you can see how much people have dropped off after the big dip. And even after what's a mild bounce that we're seeing right now, a lot of those people have not returned compared to the much higher rate of discussions in crypto that we were seeing a month ago. So that's actually a good thing, in my opinion, that so many kind of FOMOers have left and not returned. And, and there's less resistance for crypto to return to prominence and get back to those previous levels. So these are just a lot of different topics. A lot of them might overlap with the other chart we just showed. You can see AI is starting to gain some steam right now. Uh, Bitcoin ETF is actually starting to gain a little bit of traction once again. Um, the CPI report, still kind of small, but I would expect that to rise in the next 24 hours. So it's just another discussion. Um, and you can also see very nice explanations of each of, each of them and their associated words. So uh, it's it's just another way that you can get a quick summarization of the markets. Yeah, looking at this, uh, I just uh, understand. Uh, I think that's uh, I just saw like even uh, this the, the green chart in the middle is, is Solana ETF, and it was recently it was discussed in the previous week. Uh, it was uh, discussed, I believe. Uh, but, uh, I think someone. Uh, uh, was interested to launch in uh, 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 in launching uh, Solana ETF, but it was rather interesting for me that uh, it was like basically I think I I think overall ETF for such big assets I think for biggest assets in uh, in crypto we will see in some time for sure coming, but uh, still uh, it, it is discussed uh, overall uh, uh, this chart I think grants. Uh, also, not, yeah, another uh, view on uh, what we have seen uh, before. But Brian, overall, uh, what are you uh, like right now? Maybe looking at maybe what are your uh, zones of interest currently? Yeah, there's a few things. Obviously, this is quite on on the social end of things. But I do want to compare what the whales are doing compared to how the crowd is perceiving things. So this is related to the social element, uh, kind of as a the counter to how the crowd is is looking and that is what the whales are doing at any given time and you can see that for the most part this bright green line which me measures the amount of bitcoin held by 10 or more btc wallets essentially the sharks and whales they've been going up significantly uh since april 25th or so they've accumulated about 42,000 bitcoin which is pretty significant now if we contrast that to the amount of total empty wallets going on. Notice how it's declining. I'm gonna hide everything else. Uh, do that, that, and that, uh, just by holding down the Alt button and clicking each of those, you can hide or unhide them. So now we're just looking at 10 plus BTC wallets and their holdings versus the overall amount of non-empty wallets, which as you would imagine, are primarily comprised of those very small wallets, because uh, there are not very many shark and whale wallets compared to those 0.003 BTC wallets, right? So when those small, tiny 0.003 BTC wallets start to liquidate themselves because they're getting impatient after the price goes like this, I'll even draw a line. So since this local top on June 4th, you can see how much it's declined. And shortly after, the amount of non-empty wallets really just started to take a nosedive. So since June 13th, four weeks ago, uh, there is a net loss of about 615,640 Bitcoin wallets. So about 1.13% of those non-empty wallets a month ago no longer exists when, it, when accounting for all the net differences. Um, that shows a serious amount of social FUD going on amongst the crowd 
while the actual whales and sharks are scooping up those Bitcoin that these small holders are liquidating. To me, that's a very good sign that we either already bottomed or are getting very close to one uh, because one of the primary things that drive up markets would be the shark and whales and their holdings and their decisions to buy more. And that's exactly what they've been doing while the small holders are, are dumping. And those are the two elements that essentially drive markets, the opposite of the crowd's perception and the uh, reliance on the sharks and whales to buy or sell at any given time. So both are showing favorable uh, conditions if you are on the bullish side of things. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I, I agree primarily with, I think everything you said prior to this, I personally more look, more look on Ethereum. Uh, so I am, I, I, I'm more Ethereum guy and not a big Bitcoin guy here, but I can say that, uh, with, uh, everyone accepting, uh, uh, the ETF, so we are waiting for it, uh, and I think we will see this Ethereum ETF after this the same with we had seen with Bitcoin. I think we remember that the price was rocketing prior to ETF, just the day before ETF, I think, or like a couple of days prior to ETF, it's it was all time high, and then right now uh, we we see what we see, and uh, if you will uh, take a look at the graph after the ETF itself, uh, price of fallen like drastically uh, comparing to uh, what we had and the, partly the reason to it uh, is the amount of uh, assets which are uh, for instance av available to those companies who already basically bought uh, the bitcoin or ethereum at the time it was bitcoin and the same situation is with ethereum for instance for instance grayscale they control i think a lot of assets in both Ethereum and Bitcoin, and after ETF uh, for Bitcoin was approved and started to be traded, they liquidated half of their position, and it's around twenty billion dollars in uh, Bitcoin at the time. And the same, uh, and if in Ethereum they have almost bigger position, and probably this will happen. And usually, what I think is happening when ETF is approved, uh, Grayscale is just able to propose large uh, volume of uh not only grayscale but it's just like a, 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 a an example here they just uh able to propose large volumes of uh bitcoin on or, or of assets like ethereum or bitcoin or a bit discounted price for instance and that is uh and for them it's a crazy crazy uh earnings so average price if i'm not mistaken of uh, grayscale ethereum uh, is around two thousand dollars. So if you will take a look at uh, current price of Ethereum, it's closer to uh, three thousand dollars, three thousand one hundred. So in this range, and if you will take a look uh, at this price and, and understand the difference, so it's it's crazy difference. With, if it's Bitcoin, they had I think the, even the larger difference. Uh, so that's why they had uh, uh, crazy earnings in clear cash. So yes, yeah, that's kind of what it is right now. And uh, I think that's partly what we might see with Ethereum. Uh, and then maybe in, in the fall, uh, the situation overall will change. Uh, and we will see some, I think, the cumulative change in this narrative overall, because we have already seen the number of uh, positive changes on the market uh, from regulators, uh, from public overall, but uh, since uh, the beginning of spring, I believe, end of uh, winter, the situation just worsened. So it's uh, it's common for uh, for spring uh, uh, for summer overall because, as we know, sell in May and go away worked, <laughs> and this year and probably it may work uh, next year as well. So yes, yeah, that's uh, what I. I'm in particular thinking about right now with Ethereum uh, and yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your, your stance on Ethereum. I think it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out the rest of this year. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, so overall, uh, let, let us know if you have any questions uh, in the chat. 
uh, we are here to answer them. Uh, I think uh, Brian has shown uh, great uh, uh, tools uh, on sentiment, which can be used. Uh, that's what I really like about sentiment. That's basically you can uh, uh, really have an insightful uh, research on social trends. That's what I think is core because I think everyone is able to see the markets, uh, see the prices, and that is that's okay. On chain tools are available to more people, but uh, social uh, tools are, I think, really what makes it different. And that's uh, what we have here on sentiment. So yeah, let yeah, us know just, any quote. Yep. As just as a reminder, head over to our pricing page. You don't necessarily have to get any sort of paid plan. You can try a two week trial and simply click this button, make an account, and you can explore all the same charts in real time with full historical data for all of the assets. We have over 3000 on sentiment. And if you like it, you can talk to one of our experts, you can purchase a plan, you can see the different features of each of them. And uh, we're more than happy to help check our X account out at at sentimentfeed.com. I'm sorry, no.com, just at sentimentfeed. And we'd be happy to uh, provide any link for you or you can DM us directly there. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, so as uh, as for now don't see any questions uh, from people here so i think overall that's uh, there is one probably yeah uh, daniel sh says that nice nice platform uh, so yeah that's true uh, so thanks very much uh, i think i think overall we can uh, probably wrap this meeting thanks very much brian for joining uh, and uh, thank you very much for joining us with Brian today uh, on Thrix Capital Market Research. Uh, we will be waiting you here next week uh, on Thursday, as always. And see you later, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.